because every band should sound like unique in this genre. That's how it was back Whoa, in like the cool, 90s. Yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to like just ripping off, ripping off, ripping off. Yeah. I think it's really cool. I think there's like, as far as like the modern death metal bands go, uh, it's like a good time to be into death metal. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like this crossover going. Like you get hardcore combined with the grindcore combined with yeah. death metal. You have like bands like 200 stab wounds that are killing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. For soul, adding some something fresh. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I need music gear, I always go to Sweetwater.com. If it's mics, headphones, or studio and recording gear, Sweetwater has you covered. Next time you need any music gear, support the podcast by using the link in the description and comment section below. How did the Uber driver not know you were going to the right area? Dude, he was talking to me about wrestling so much that he just, I think, totally zoned out. And he was, he was talking about the House of Black, which is like, I don't know wrestling like that. Yeah. But I know like um, uh, Brody from like God's Hate does it. And he was just going on and on about it. And I was like not really paying attention. I was actually like listening to him. Yeah. Because it was pretty cool. He was kind of like putting me on the game. And then uh, and then he's like, all right, we're here. And I looked around. And I was like, no, we're not. And then he kind of got the idea. He's like, oh, we're not here. And then we were in Long Beach. I don't get how that happens. If you fucking type in an address, it says Santa Ana. Aren't you going to Santa Ana? I swear I typed what? in Santa Ana. I like triple checked. Um, Did you fuck up? I'm going to fucked up, dude. Do you... You, you I might have up. fucked this up, <laughs> but I'm going to redeem it. Well, uh, even though the uh, time has passed and you, you had to hold your pee on for an hour, I, I, I appreciate you actually being here. Yeah, for everyone listening, I uh, yeah just held my, my piss for like an hour and a half. That but, sucks. But it was cool. It was cool because you got a great place and a great bathroom, and I'm good now. You got clean bathrooms, dude. Yes. yes. It's funny. Like, the, like There's things in life where like, they just get you stoked, like like a clean bathroom. Things yes. that the things that you just like, oh man, I didn't know what it's a clean bathroom. Oh, I was sick. Yes, nice. yes, especially like on tour. That's like dude. the craziest. That's like the best thing, dude. If you have a fucking solid door with a solid lock on it and a nice, per- and, you, and you see that toilet seat, dude, this looks nice. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. This is like some insider stuff. Yeah, or like at a <laughs> venue, like a good venue, perfect shower. Like perfect oh, sink, dude. there's towels, everything. You're like, this is better than a hotel room. Dude, if you see a, a towel there and a nice, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness, dude. Yeah. You know, and uh, so before I forget, yeah. so you did your last record with uh, Kurt Ballou, Yeah, definitely. Correct. Okay. What were you using? Like, like, like just, a, like just yeah. a guitar tone. What, like, what, what was that? So, um, on our first album, The Grand Descent, we used this uh, guitar amp called the Sparrow Sons. It's uh, from this guy from like Belarus made it for him. Okay. And uh, it's like, I can't even, I don't know what to call it. It's like a Saldano, a Mesa. and Saldano? Uh, ki- kind of, it's not a Saldano. It's a, it's a guy who makes cars, races cars, and built this in his basement, like on some mad scientist shit, you know? Okay. And uh, yeah, he built that. And is this it? That yes, yes, that's it. That's why I use on stage actually. Um, really? Yeah, he doesn't really build a lot of them, but he got like super bored over the past few years. I think the guy's just like always building stuff, and I got him at the right time. Mm. And uh, I've never seen that red one. I wish I had that, dude. Mine's uh, mine's blue. Do that. <laughs> it's, just, it's crazy, right? <laughs> just a logo. Bo bo pin <laughs> means sparrow, but. Yeah, that's but, like Kurt's like OG. That's like the really that one's oh. like the really good one. No shade on like or not not trying to, you know, talk badly about mine, but um that amp and then um we use like a Dean Costello audio. It's this guy out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. It is just like the most high gain amp I've ever played. Really? And yeah, yeah. And we did that with like a heavy metal two pedal. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, man, that's it. On clean channel, actually. On clean channel. The amp is on clean channel. Interesting. What you, you used a Boss HM2? Yes, dude. That that's the pedal, dude. That's really? the pedal, man. Yeah, that's the secret to oh, like shit. the next the next level. 
That's what I believe. I believe it's the secret to like the next level of like high gain. We probably just blew up the internet because now all these pillows are gonna be worth a lot. Dude, all, all, all it takes is someone saying something and then they just fucking go. HM2. On, but they I got have, this new one. I have one too. You do? I That's do what's up. One. Which one do you have? That one. The uh, HM2. Hell yeah. There's, well, if you look over there, there's the Wazacraft one. So oh. it's like right in the middle of the screen we're looking at. If you click on that. Um, what does that, that mean? That's like the brand new one they just put out. And it's got like a standard and it's got a custom mode. Hmm. And um, that's what we used oh, on our okay. new one. I used to use this 80s like Japanese one. Very authentic. Very good. Super buzzsaw. I like this one a bit more because it's still Japanese. It's still like, okay. you know. The same quality, well, it's actually better quality because it was made in 2023 as opposed to like 1984. Sure. So it's like sometimes you step on it and it was like, <laughs> yeah, like hit you with the like, you yeah. know, like really noisy stuff. So yeah, it's way yeah. cleaner now. Okay. So it's was a craft HM2. So it's on a clean channel. On a clean channel. You know what's funny is that back in the day, like early 2000s, like that was looked down upon. Like if you had your a distortion yeah. pedal, on a on a clean tone, be like, yeah. oh, why 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 don't you use the fucking overdrive channel, dude? You know now now it's like now it's coming back around. It's, it sounds like, dude, it's crazy because I think that I think people would say that to me. I'd be like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll throw it on the overdrive channel, and then like I wasn't getting the tone I wanted ever, and then eventually, I don't know what it was through like probably recording at God City with Kurt Ballou. Mm -hmm. Like realizing like, oh, wow, I can make my tone sound way crazier with this pedal into a clean channel. And ever since then, yeah, man, I just feel like we're so dialed in. You sound very dialed in. Thank you. That's fucking nuts. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like a, a, like a buzzsaw. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for uh, sure. This might, uh, it's not, this, this is not, this is a lighthearted comment towards uh, Kurt uh, and Taylor Young, they have like that. They had that sound to to their records. Yes, but to me, it just sounds like they heard they heard Carcass and Nazem once, and that's just okay. Let, let, let's just do that. It's definitely more than that. Yeah, it is. But uh, but have you heard Nazem? Oh yeah. For some reason, whenever I hear an over the top tone, for some reason, my ear just goes to that band. There's there's certain bands that'll do that. My ear will go to uh, uh, Rotten Sound. Have you, Rotten you know, Sound. Okay. Yeah, if you know that band, they're like. A band that uses HM2 and they get overlooked a lot and they're they're really? really good. Yeah, they're not like a original like early like late eighties, early nineties death metal band, but around like two thousand ten they were doing it right. They were doing it when they came out. Way crazier than uh than Nazem. No Nazem is awesome. Are you but, talking shit on Nazem already, dude? Fuck, yeah. 10 minutes in? Yeah. Hey, hey Jay, can, can you, can you no, get this on no, the screen? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Can you get this on the screen? When did Rotten Sound come out? Dude, that's such a good question, actually. See, okay, so 93. They came so, out 90? No, did they? Yeah, they. I know they've been around for a while. I mean, they weren't around at the same time as like I didn't know that. Nihilist or Entombed, which really started late 80s. But they were probably still listening to that music and doing stuff. I didn't know that. And a lot of people like pigeonhole it to Entombed. That's like the one for mm, HM2. Yeah. But there's been so many bands doing it so well over the years. And then so many like like uh, producers that do it well too. Shit. Yeah, dude. That's probably, yeah, you just mind fucked me. That part, that's probably where Nazem got it from because Nazem was late 90s. Yeah. And I didn't know they came out in 93 and, and, and they're, and they're uh, from Finland. Yeah, man. I didn't know yeah. either of it, those things. It, the, for, as far as like HM2 goes, it started, um, oh man, it's hard to actually say. There was a, there was a Canadian band that kind of had that buzzsaw tone, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it's, it got notoriety, like notoriety came to it um, at Sunlight Studio in uh, Sweden, where they did like a lot of uh, Dismember, Entomb, Nirvana 2002. Uh, Triblinka, Tiamat, like all those bands. And I think they just did it by accident and they kind of like just spread throughout like the whole scene back then. Mm -hmm. And um, dude, I mean, as far as me growing up and starting the band, I, like you were saying, like I started Fumi Mouth in 2013. At that time, there was uh, bands like Black Breath, if you've ever heard Black of them. Black Breath, no. Oh, they're incredible. They're not around right now. Um, rest in peace, uh, Elijah, their bassist absolute goat but um like they did the sound 
so well, so well on the first two records. And they were a band like that uh, started, I forget, like 2000, like late 2000s and like we're really killing it in 2010, 2012. Mm -hmm. They have this album, Sentence to Life. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And like, so when I started the band, there were like bands like that that were doing it super, super well. Nails is like another one, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so it's kind of one of those things where like, Everyone has a different approach to like the buzz saw tone, I think, you yeah. know, it's just like how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's about style. Yeah. Who do you think personally has, has the best one? You. Just say it. Fuming mouth. Yes. Yeah. Finally, someone says it. Yeah. Come on. Fuming mouth, man. Is, this, is, is, is it funny that like our minds will go to like, uh, the, your mind goes to not being confident at all? It's just funny. Like your yeah. mind is like, would trick you. Say, no, no, don't. No, it's not. Just, I'll be confident so about it because it's all reference. You know what I mean? Sure. I would have never gotten to this point if like Entomb didn't push it as far from left hand path, which is like flawless to me, all the way to Wolverine Blues, which is like accessible to everyone. Hmm. So, I mean, fuming mouth. <laughs> that is what's up. What was the first what was the first heavy band you heard that got you into this whole life? Oh. Two bands. Two. Okay. Two bands at the same time. In Flames and Children of Bodom. Mm. Needle 24-7 by Children of Bodom and um, Clay Man by In Flames. My friends. Clay Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The song Clay Man. Yeah. My friends had it on a World of Warcraft uh, montage when I was in high school. Yeah. Or like middle school. I can't remember. And um, I, th I just put them. Th those are the only two songs on my iPod. I would just listen to them. <laughs> you only had two songs on I had your two iPod. Two songs on my iPod. That's sick. Yeah, just those two songs. I listened to them over and over again. I was like, this is awesome. How old I you? had I was I was fifteen. So it was definitely high school. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, I thought like those were like the only two songs in the world. And then I'm That's like That's funny. There's like <laughs> millions of these songs. Yeah, and here I am now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, when you have a a song you love or two, you could just Put those on repeat, dude. That's the best vibe ever. It's like, is it, uh, th th this is your vibe? This is my vibe? Well, I'm going to listen to these two songs. For yeah, it. yeah. Oh, 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 was it like, we doing this for like a month, uh, six months, a year? <laughs> dude, it was like a long time. I remember somebody, it was a long time. It's interesting that you're bringing on Bodum because they're, they're, more, uh, they're more towards like, I guess like the lead riffy. But, yes. But Inflamed is more like, Rhythm groove, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. makes it make it, it makes sense. That's exact, especially those two songs you said. Mm -hmm. Like Clayman is just like, and you know, children of uh, needle twenty four seven, way faster, way crazier, way more like lead heavy. Just fucking riffing, dude. For sure. Just fucking. We're dude, we're, we're talking riffs today, dude. Yeah, let's talk riffs. Let's, let's just talk riffs, dude. Yeah. What was uh? So you heard. Those two songs, when you were 15, you basically, I mean, this is like, uh, your life changed. My life changed. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was changing until I looked at the play count on my iTunes. And it like, mm -hmm. Needle 24-7 was over 100 plays. And I was like, oh, I'm listening to this music a lot. And then like, yeah, just from there on, I just kept like, uh, just discovering more and more bands. It's more and more. That, so those were like, that was like your gateway, you know? Yeah, I... Sometimes I think about the gateway like title and I'm like, I don't know if it's like, if bands are, some bands get labeled like gateway that I don't think deserve to be gateway. Like Children of Bodom is like influenced by like Celtic Frost and like incredible, incredible bands. Sure. Like, I think some bands just do it so well, they get called gateway. Mm. When really it's like, I, I don't know. I, I have friends that the opposite where like a really underground band is their like entry point to this, you know? Yeah. But um, as mm. far as me getting into it, yeah, definitely the t those two bands. Okay. Well, sick. Well, uh, Mark, congrats. Uh, the record's been out for a, a few weeks now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of few, few weeks. How are you feeling about it? Dude, I feel wicked good about it, honestly. It's like, so our first record, The Grand Descent, we put out on like Triple B Records and it, it was amazing. It, it's a, a hardcore at the time it was like a small hardcore label from boston mm. it was just my friend that put it out uh sam oh, wow. sam yarmouth he just does the label himself and it's grown into this thing that is like huge they like uh they do like tsunami and stuff like that okay and cool. um it was awesome it, it, it was amazing then we and 
Sam was the one to be like, have you hit up any like big metal labels? What's up with that? He said that in the car to me once, like a while ago before we were on Triple B. And we kind of talked about it. Long story short, we ended up on Nuclear Blast. And that has like, that has led to like so many reviews and like press and stuff. And like Fumi Mouth has never had that before. Mm. And it's so cool to see for the first time. That's great. Yeah. We should discuss this real quick. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about our, our small text exchange? Okay. So definitely. Why are you reading the reviews of your record? Because, well, I put it out there. I, I make music for other people, not just for myself. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's like I was just saying, this is my first time. Like, Triple B, it was one of those yeah, things where it was okay. underground. It was never, no one reviewed it. Ex except for, I think, like, Anthony Fantano for, like, 30 <laughs> seconds in, like, a huge month-long thing. I'm serious. So I was like, it just was something that was never in my mind. Something mm. I never, like, seen before. And, um, yeah, I was just like, holy shit, all these people are, like, reviewing reviewing this album. And now it's, like, um, it's super cool. And luckily I had, you know, a friend who was like, you know what, don't give a fuck about it and uh, <laughs> have fun with it. So that's what I've been doing now. I'm just having fun. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's gasoline for your soul, man. Yeah, dude. It's just it's, it's it, dude. At first, yes, that's like how, how I see it now, and it's mm. fucking awesome. Are you a competitive guy? Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially mm. like in the past few years, I've definitely become way more competitive for sure. Nice. Yeah, I guess why it, it was so it's a little bit shocking to me because especially with I mean like the just a plate of life that you had to deal with that that, that was fed to you. Just I mean. To go from that and then now you're reading like reviews. I'm like, man, I, I, Mark's kind of seems like the kind of person to me. Like after all that, he would just be like, fuck everything. I'm, I'm not reading shit. No, so man. I, 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 was like, very, I was very surprised. I was really vulnerable with this record, I think. There's moments mm. on it. There's melodic moments where it was like, I was like, ah, I could die tomorrow. I don't care. I'm just going to record exactly how I feel in this moment. And mm. like, I didn't think about that going out into the public. I forgot that people are like vicious as fuck. You 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 forget sometimes. Yeah yeah yeah, and it, it's crazy like that. Um, but uh, I don't give a fuck. Don't ever get you that shouldn't. mixed up, you know. You but shouldn't. there there are times where I like read a review or something, and somebody like uh, shits on our song like the riff. We're talking about riffs, right? In yeah. rest in R I P rest in piss, which is like literally derivative of supposed to rot by entombed so it's like mm. if you're shitting on that riff you're shitting on entombed which is one of my favorite <laughs> bands and now i'm like mad because it's like <laughs> what the fuck entombed is great and like maybe you hate entombed and that's why you're like thinking of it like that so it's sure. it's one of those things where i see that and i'm like you can come for my clean singing i get that you can come for like this but when it comes to riffs dude i don't know all the way back to black sabbath i feel like sometimes i feel like metal is like this big like mansion or house or like the canon of metal and everyone adds to it in their own special way you know yeah yeah it's true it's always, uh, since you brought up the uh, cleansing and did you feel like what uh like, like what happened did you get any kind of like back backlash from that and, and kind of pushback um in the studio no everyone was like really supportive of that which was really cool um my friend charlie a bend really helped me like with singing and i always knew my influences had clean singing in it whether it was like a band like Edge of Sanity, like with Dan Swano. So, mm -hmm. and he used an HM2 pedal as well. So it was like, mm. it wasn't weird to me. And um, yeah, we definitely get backlash on it. But at the same time, I've been doing clean singing with Fuming Mouth since 2019. Okay. Tw since really 2018. And we've been doing it longer than that. So it's like, yeah. if you didn't know that, then that means you're just not a fan of the band. And I don't want you around anyways. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, people are going to come and go anyway, so might as well just fucking play what you want to play. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And it's connecting, like, super well on a whole different level. You can tell, like, The Silence Beyond Life is our biggest song at shows right now. Really? Absolutely. Yeah, what, yeah what's, like, yeah, what's, like, the re reaction like for my like, people? Because I mean, you actually, you actually, you're in the fucking room. There's, you're, not, you're, not looking yes. at, you're not looking at your fucking phone or reading some. Like, you are literally playing it, 
and you see the reaction. What, 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 what's that like? It's crazy, man. It's like it, we toured with the Black Dahlia Murder and every night we'd have like a couple people singing along. Mm. But now it's turning into like more and more. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really cool. Like even last night, there was three people in the front singing like so loud to the silence beyond life. And I was just like, what the hell? Because I, I didn't really expect it like that. Um, I just wanted to make a good song. Mm -hmm. I know that's not that many people. That doesn't sound crazy, but uh, it was still like, oh, wow, this is hitting. Interesting. Yeah. Yes, it's good to hear because, yeah, I first saw uh, your band on, on that tour. Just because I went yeah, to, just went to see, like, the Black uh, Dollar Murder. It's literally down the street. House of Blues is, like, five miles away from here. So, uh, so I, was, I, was, I was at the house. House Blues. I kind of, I kind of creeped in, watched a few songs. Oh shit, they're fucking heavy as shit. I didn't know you were there that night. Yeah, I kind of creeped in. Dude, dude, that show was amazing. It was. Dude. That was one of my favorite shows. Really? Yes, absolutely. Why? Um, I sang with the Black Dollar Murder that night. Oh shit, it's dope. Like, <laughs> like, uh, right on. like Brian had me come on. He just said it. He was like, Mark from Fuming Mouth, come over here. Boom. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this. And uh, it's a song like Death Mask Divine. It's wicked good. I've loved mm -hmm. it since like I was a kid. And uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. It was really, really cool. It's pretty cool seeing like uh, all their fans support uh, Brian. It's cool. I know, man. They need it. They need. They need like the energy behind them. You know, so to keep to keep the name alive, to keep it going, dude. Absolutely. It, it, and it is really cool. It was great to see him. Like, damn, it was, it's fucking packed. I think it was sold out. Oh, definitely. And uh, people drinking and moshing. I'm like, damn, this. It's, they're fucking doing it, man. Cool light show. It, it sounded great. I'm like, damn, okay. Yeah, man. Sick. I, I was actually very, honestly, I was, I was very surprised. That's good. Brian, Brian sounded good. Okay, they're, they're fucking, they're, they're, they're on that journey. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's just, like, he's just plotting and scheming. I mean, Ryan and, and like, um, Ryan Knight is, like, being back in the band and then having, like, the extra guitar leads and extra solos. And he was an Arsis. Arsis was a great band as well. Mm. Arsis was a crazy band. They're crazy. And They're like, uh, nuts, dude. Yeah, man. I just feel like uh, it's like just being built up even stronger. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it just kind of hit me now. Like, yeah, that, that tour package was a very emotionally heavy package with like you, obviously, with what you've been through. And uh, I think that was their first tour back without Trevor. Yeah, fucking. That was their first. So so sad. First dude. tour back after Trevor passed away, and that was my first tour back after I had uh, leukemia. So it was just like that, that. That was your first tour. That was my first tour, tour back. back. Yeah, and it was like a big, heavy duty one. So it was like, if I can do this, I can do anything, kind of thing. But yeah, it was it was serious. It was definitely like a lot of weight to lift. But um, it's nights like that, like Anaheim show, that were totally worth it. Where it was like so much fun. Hmm. I was curious, like, how did you find out that, that you had cancer? Um, dude, I just felt sick. I felt like uh, I had the flu. And uh, except instead of getting better, it just felt worse and worse every day. I was like, what is going on? Went into the hospital one day. Um, they took my blood and, like, they took my blood work. And I had, like, no white blood cells. And they're like, you got to go into the hospital like inpatient right now so we can figure it out and then next thing you know uh sorry you have cancer that's exactly how it went what was that news like um dude i mean it was like my whole world fell apart it was fucking horrible but um you know like uh but immediately immediately it just turned into like fight or flight kind of mentality and it Went all the way, no fence walking, all the way into fight. And it was like, let's just beat this thing. And that's what we did. Man, you're, you're a strong, m m mentally stable guy. That's fucking pretty intense. Hey, man, I mean, not. we all got our vices. We all got our problems. I mean, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fucking heavy, dude. Because uh, obviously when, when you get sick as men, we kind of have this thing programmed deep into our, our DNA. We're like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get checked out. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go to hospital. I'm not going to go to ER. You know, but you actually, oh no, it was my girl who was like pushing me to do yeah, it. Her yeah, mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this was not a one man uh, operation. <laughs> it was like, Mark, what are you doing? Yeah. And I was like on the couch. I'm like, I'm going to feel better. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, was I did she, not. Was, uh, was she already your fiance at the time? 
definitely. Okay, so that's yeah. Oh no, 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 she was not. She was not. Sorry. Okay, no. so that was just my girl. I just uh, she was my girlfriend at the time, and I proposed to her in August. Okay, so it's recent. It's recent. It's oh, recent. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow, I'm out here trying to live, Garza. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to live in Ubers, dude. It's sick. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm gonna live in the Uber if the guy. Nah, shout out to my Uber driver. He he was cool. He wants to fucking ruin this podcast. Nah, but, uh, nah. but he but, was trying to put me on game to wrestling. Okay. 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 Let's give him. A, yeah, yeah. What's I got what's a history so, lesson, and you know, it's good. Yeah, it is. What's so? I mean, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, and but but you lived it like so. You you got this news, and you have to check get checked into the hospital but covid has already happened covid is happening so it was like around omicron and uh i couldn't have like visitors you couldn't have visitors no nah. fuck but dude. shout out to my nurses and everyone that would get my parents in or my girl in so That's it was like so, okay. we would make it work and then like sunny from hey five six he said they set up a benefit show for me when i was uh in the hospital at one point it's not online it's just a live stream I got to watch like all my friends' bands play from like, dude, from the hospital room. What? Yeah, it was awesome. I, I I never met met that guy, but I keep seeing his videos, and obviously his his character speaks. You know, that's, Sonny. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, he's the man. Fuck. What? So you were watching a live stream show? He set he set up a live stream show, a live stream of a benefit show with um all bands I had played in. Uh, Vain, Buried Dreams, this band Misery from around here. Have you ever heard of them? No. Oh, Misery is so good. With a Z. And um, my friend's band High Command and um, this other band Fleshwater. I think they play one of the nights. And he set up like a live stream so I could just like watch it from my hospital bed. Dude, that's... And then they all like talked into the camera for me. Yeah. It was cool. That's some heavy shit, dude. Yeah. You yeah. know, did you ever think like, um, like, am I, am I going to die? Like, am I, is this like, did you, did you, well, so that, that that's thought ever I mean. creep, creep in? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But it's hard to say it. I don't want to say that because I, I go, I digress to the fight or flight thing where it just turned into a full fight. And like, I was not like, there was a time I was like praying to God. I was like, come on. Die. come on come on come on and then it was like it really hit me it was like oh i have to take this into my own hands like do all the things the doctors say and like get through all like take the proper pills take the medicine do chemotherapy do all that stuff and like hmm. really be careful about like my health make sure i don't like get a virus eat the right things that they're telling me to do mm -hmm. so it, it became really like mind over matter where it was like i can't think about dying right now or else i will die does that make sense interesting yeah it was like i gotta think about um i have to take these 20 pills today you know at these certain times and like Fuck. that's like what yeah dude straight up survival oh my goodness dude because during those moments i mean if you're not in there i mean you can only imagine because i think about that stuff like what would it, like what would i think about you know what would if i got that news like where like where where would my mind go but you just seems like you just you went straight to just fighting, and that's yeah. And, and, didn't, didn't and playing like video games. <laughs> yeah. What did you play? Uh, I played Pokemon. I played a couple of Pokemon's in Elden Ring. I just crushed through those, dumped hours into it, and then just like, <laughs> and I played guitar too. Those are like those two things, you know, just like lots of distractions from like all of those kind of thoughts, and then yeah. just like making sure I got my shit done, hmm. and then um, yeah, just getting to the other side. I was wondering, like, I mean, is, is he, man, did you think about any riffs in there? Oh, all the time, dude. Damn, dude. I can imagine, dude. I wonder, oh, I don't have my phone on me. There was one I wrote in the hospital bed for Kill the Disease, and I, I was just so tired. I just took out my phone. I went, dun-dun, dun-dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Do you and, still, do you still have it? I think so. Fuck. You want me to try and grab it? Yeah, quick? dude. Quick, hold on. So... Uh, yeah, grab it. I'll, I'll start talking. Which uh, I, do, I do the same thing too. Like if you have a if you have a idea, you'll take out your phone. You start dun 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 dun, and then you have you have the voice memo, and it's saved. It's saved forever. 
but you got but you got to get your idea out. You know? How are we looking? Oh. <laughs> First of all, thank this, this. This is a very vulnerable thing, so I really appreciate you actually sharing this. I haven't listened to this since we like recorded the demo of it, and we were like, "This riff is crazy." Okay, March thirtieth, twenty twenty two. The first demo. We should have done that with the double kick. There it is. That's like the whole song. Dude. I was like, I condensed it into 30 seconds. I'm like, okay, breakdown. There's got to be a fast part. Oh, I should say kill the disease. <laughs> it was like, yeah, dude. Dude, that is, that is beyond fucking sick. I can't believe I still have that on my phone. You got to save just it. Like, you got to oh, save I, that. You just like unearthed it. I was like, it's actually, it's definitely still on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did that make a song? Yeah, yeah. Kill the disease. It did, oh, that, that, that song, that kill the it. disease. Yeah, yeah. It's track, uh. It's on uh, the B side, uh, last day of song, yeah. Oh, shit. we've been playing it live. That's the one where it's like, oh, this is the fun one. There's no guitar solos. It's just tremolo picking, and then just like, wow. I hate using dude. this word, but like beat down. You know, it's just like too much. And doom. There is one doomy ass riff that's like kind of like a bolt thrower meets autopsy meets incantation, which is kind of crazy. Um. Do, do you do you remember where that certain section is in, in the song? Because we're we're gonna try to play five seconds of it. Um, forty seconds in. Yeah, like that. Oh yeah. Wow! It made it. It did. Holy fuck, dude! That's. <laughs> I actually can't believe it made it. It was definitely That's one of dope. the last because the album we like. I wrote most of it, and we recorded a lot of it. Not like on some like pre-pro stuff, but we did that before I got sick. So this is like one of the only ones where it was like after I got sick that made it to the album. You know, hmm. Damn. Obviously, I mean, it killed the disease. You know what I'm saying, dude? That is what's up. Yeah, you should have fucking kept the fucking pattern. I know, I know. I just heard that back. I was like, why do we not do that? Oh, shit. It's funny, that, again, our minds would just f f fuck it up. I know. Do you have that? Do you notice that with Suicide Silence? Oh, yeah. Like, like you'll look back and be like, I can't believe we took that. You try and make something Toast. simpler, and then yeah. you're like, that part wasn't even complex, mm -hmm. you know? Because not all the time, obviously, but most of the time, that that initial spark yeah. is what's the best idea. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sometimes you want you want to tweak it. Sometimes it, it, it needs to be tweaked, but most that ninety percent of the time, dude, that spark is just don't fucking touch it. I know. And I learned this from a uh, shout out to Ross Robinson. Uh, he he taught me like when you when you either play a riff or write one, or you're hanging out with with, with your band, you're showing, or you're at, at the studio, uh, uh, etc. And when when you're either laughing or or you play it, and then you're all you you all happen to have like a conversation after because yeah. you're because you're open. Cause, yeah, cause, yeah, cause, yeah, cause yeah. Your heart is like you don't think about it, but your heart's open. So you're all, you're all talking at, after the riff or, or the part. Yeah, it's like yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter yeah. what your brain thinks, it's gonna be better. Don't fucking touch it. And that that has stuck with me for years. It's That's like so a nice cool. little. So yeah. base, yeah, shout, shout out to Ross. Yeah, I don't. That's that, cool. That's gonna stick with me now. Boom. Because I'm already thinking about that, but then uh, I don't want to say I second guess things, but that is that second guess is where you fuck that up. You know, it is. So it's like, yeah, I'm it in is, that mode, man. We have another one that was like, uh, uh, it's an interlude on the album called Disgusterlude, and there's no H2. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's the opposite on purpose. It's just a big muff, like cranked all the way up that's what it sounded like a big muff yeah, yeah 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 and that was the same thing voice memo kurt baloo took it he was just like airdrop me that and i airdropped it and he put the voice memo in and then we just put like uh like the one i had where it was like poof, poof. and uh he put it into it so it was coming out of the console and we just put the drums guitars and bass over the voice memo dude that's sick yeah that's the beauty of kurt baloo right there he'll find a moment and just <clears throat> bullseye it as fast as he can. 
that that whole process sounded like it was, it was fun. Dude, it was so much fun. He really made he really solidified your uh, your your sound. Yeah, you know it's dope. Yeah, he's been doing records like Fumi Mouth for so long. So for him seeing it, it's nothing new. It's like regular for him. And um, yeah, he just he, I think like solidify the sound is like the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So from your what was so this is a two part question. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so just so you know, I'm, I'm gonna ask one question. I'm gonna answer a counter when, when you explain that. Yeah. So, um, what was the writing process like for the first record? Because this is obviously pre cancer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first one was like um, jamming, jamming in practice space kind of vibe. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then eventually, it was like uh, it kind of just ended up just being me in the band this was around like 2016 and i learned how to like figure out how to do like midi drums mm -hmm. like on a computer sick and then from there it was like kind of that practice space thing into just like fleshing out like demos of full songs doing like terrible mixes having my friends help me mix it so it yep. can like make sense to someone yep and uh you know that that was it it was fractured as hell it was like this is all i got for the demo and then hmm. um my friend kale he plays in like a ton of bands twitching tongues he plays in uh uh he played in that band misery i was talking about hmm. the list goes on like i've known him for so long he came out and he was like uh i asked him if he wanted to play on the album and he was down and um me and him would just like chill every night he was like living at my apartment for like three weeks like a month and then we just went to god city and just like smashed it out hmm. so based off of that i mean took all those ideas and for this album it was like i got really good at like the midi and the computer thing mm -hmm. and like all of that so it was way i got better at like pre-pro so then that kind of came into this album which was nice mm. okay. or the other one they were like there wasn't there, there was and there wasn't pre-pro. I say fractured as in like, I was like, sure. I have a really good fleshed out idea for this song. And then this one, we just jammed at the space. So we got to like make it work. Mm. Yeah. So, so there's that process. And then where you almost died that, yeah. you know, that, you know, that little part of your life, right? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. That's yeah, weird. And then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, how did the process change? Like, did, cause, cause now, cause now you have a whole other perspective that marked that up. Most of us. 99 per 9 don't really know that mind, you yeah. know, because we, we all, we all have that fear of dying or maybe like having cancer or, yeah. or you, you name it, but you actually lived it. You, yeah. you, you actually had the uh, thought. So I was, uh, did, uh, how did your mindset change? Um, I mean, as far as that, it was, you know, it was kind of talking about like the Ross Robinson thing. It kind of came more so like naturally like that, where, I will say, like, I, on the first album, The Grand Descent, I was so particular. I was like, things have to be a certain way. Mm. They have to be a certain way. And then you realize, like, you kind of got a, um, what's the quote from Mike Tyson? Everyone's got a plan until they get, get punched, punched in, in the face. face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that's, <laughs> that's where everything changed. We got punched in the face, you know? And it was like, oh, oh wow. I, so it was like kind of the planning for it went aside. And it's like, it's just going to be what it is. And we're just going to, like, work as hard as we can, you know? So you learn to like let let go of things that maybe don't 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 matter. Roll with the punches. That's what I think I learned. You know, hmm. roll with the unexpected. Like there's just gonna be unexpected stuff that sucks, like in recording and in life. So it's just like one of those things where you just gotta keep up. Hmm. That's it. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah, that's how it changed for me. Hmm. Like were you more vulnerable with with, with the risk? Were you like were, were you feeling different when you were playing or writing it? Like what was? Oh, dude. I mean, I lost the ability to play guitar for like a month from uh my bone marrow transplant Dude, what was that like oh that was I, that was scarier than um getting diagnosed with cancer because getting got if you get cancer like we live in a good day and age of medicine where like there's a lot of ways to overcome that but like i don't know any guitarist would know the fear of that like i see like the saw movies and if the if the guy was like you have to cut off your fingers if you want to live i would be like okay i'll die you know and uh, so when that happened, I picked up a guitar and I literally couldn't press my fingers onto the fretboard. Yeah, I freaked out. I freaked the fuck out. That that was a freak out moment. And um, but then I just kept picking it up every day, playing it a little, playing it a little bit more, 
playing a little bit more. And then once I like was able to leave the hospital, I went to this like apartment that like uh, you're supposed to stay out after getting a transplant. And uh, I riffed uh, Pain Into Power by Terror. Sick. Like <laughs> hard because it was just like it had just come out and the riffs are like super hard and just like built my strength back. And then, uh, yeah, I just, like, played. Then I got into guitar solos. So it was, like, step by step. You know what I mean? Instead of baby steps, it was, like, giant steps. It was, like, huh. okay, what's, like, uh, this? these riffs are really hard to play and fast, and they have to be power chords, not single notes, you know? And then, uh, yeah, I just got it back. That was, like, that has been challenging, um, like, physically with playing again. But, like, every day, every show we play, I get better. So it's still it's it, it it it's an ongoing process. Yeah. Still right now. I'm pretty good right now. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm good. not gonna lie, I'm pretty good right You're now. Good, man. You know, it's good. once it's you great. get it on the scale of bad to good, it's like, nah, I'm pretty good. I'm really happy. Uh but uh I could I could definitely like there's still times I like miss notes and stuff like that where I'm like, oh. we all do we all do, it's fine. Right? That's what that's why I'm like yeah, it's, I'm it's just fine. I'm gonna chill about it. How long did that take for you to get uh when you felt like from that from like you can't play this day day yeah. one from like okay i i could really start playing now how, how long how long was was that three to four months three to four months definitely of playing like starting out like an hour a day to like uh i would throw on one piece the anime and just play for however long or like stranger things or some stupid thing on the tv anything and just like not pay attention and just kind of turn the brain off and yeah. just play and once i hit that mode it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to play for one hour a day, like rigid. Then I was able to like really be myself again with playing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Do we we forget how powerful it is just to fucking lay back and watch a movie or, or like a show? And yeah. it's just like this like brainless fucking riff. Yes. Yes. I, I do I always forget about that. Yeah. Or you'll write a riff to like yeah, a movie. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. We have a song Respect and Blasphemy, and I wrote a lot of those riffs. Oh, not the train to Busan. There's like a horror movie that came out after that. I don't even know the name of it because it's like what you, you just throw it on. I was just like watching like a crazy zombie movie. Yeah. And I was just playing like crazy zombie riffs. <laughs> zombie riffs. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Do a fucking zombie riffs. Zomb zombie slams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zombie blast. Okay, you go on, on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that that one is straight up just do -da -do -da -do -da -do -da until the like very end. So. No zombie blast in that one, but you know they're there if you know you're feeling it. Yeah, dude, this, this record is is such like if if you were to look back, like I mean this this record just came out this month. Kind of like it sounds like 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 the process started like in 2018 where we, where we saw uh, th Thirty Days a Night. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, it kind of sounds like that. That's what because uh, the record is like first starts off as fiction. Yeah, but for yeah. you it starts now it's like real life. Yeah, 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 that, dude. That, that's fucking crazy how long that that process was how you had like uh the name of the record for that long i know and it's kind of let it sit through like all these different stages of your life yeah it's it's one of those things where it's like i wanted it to come out so much sooner but you know so many things got in the way and it just grew into the you know the album it is now that do you what that's a four and a half five year process Something like that. I mean, we put out an EP called Beyond the Tomb. In, oh, yeah. In yeah. between it. And, like, yeah. I'm really proud of those songs, too. That's, like, it's hard because EPs, like, get, sl like, slept on a lot. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, it wasn't just this, like, huge gap where we were waiting. It was, like, always riffing, always coming up coming up with stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I noticed uh, even from your start from, like, 2013, it's just, like, you have these... Uh, Two, three year gaps. Yeah, you know, my, my, I mean, what is he doing? Is he just reading like Gene Wolfe books all day? And it's like not, <laughs> dude, I, dude. I wish. No, it was. I really started fuming mouth, just like not as a serious endeavor. A lot of people start bands like we're gonna hit the road, we're gonna become big, have these mm -hmm. aspirations. There was like a couple venues in in Massachusetts, Rad Skate Park, on mm -hmm. uh, this place called Anchors Up, this place called Democracy Democracy Center. And I really just wanted to put out a good demo and play those venues. That that was like really it. That's kind of what everyone at the time wanted to do. There was no the aspiration was just to make good songs, and it kind of was like that in hardcore. So like at that time, it's very different now. But over those years, you know, it wasn't until like 
2015, 2016, where I was like, oh, I, I really want to do this like seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that's when like, so they, there are these like gaps in time with it because it like wasn't the number one thing. And then uh, eventually like people liked it. I wanted to push it harder, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Interesting. You, you talk about uh, Gene Wolfe. Yeah, man. So what? He, uh, so he had books that that you enjoyed. What, what what was like the, like how did he inspire your, your band and riffs? Dude, specifically like the storyline for Last Day of Sun was like, I was just trying. I'm like, it, no one comes up with an idea out of nowhere, and I'd seen it on like Thirty Days a Night, just like the title. I just said like, not the title, but like just this like one like uh, text card that said Last Day of Sun. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's got to be, like, something out there that deals with this idea. Yeah. And his book, um, uh, Shadow of the Torturer. That is such a sick title for a book. I isn't that, like, like, the most metal shit alive? It's a, it's a metal fucking. Yeah. <laughs> and his work and this idea that, like, because in my mind, I was like, okay, the sun's just going to blow out, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I started reading his work, and that's the first of his four book series. You know, there's other ones like Claw of the Consolator and stuff, and, like, um, that was when it was like this idea of the sun getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Mm -hmm. And then I just started applying a lot of like those ideas and how like people kind of like live in that. Cause originally mm -hmm. I was like, this is going to be an album where everyone goes like crazy and just like kills each other. Cause they hear it's the like last day of sun. And you always yeah. hear people be like, if, it, if I have one day to li live, I'd go to the beach. And it's like, you yeah. probably wouldn't. You probably freak the fuck out and like yeah. scream and like I don't know lose your mind. Yeah. And I read that book and that's when I realized I was like oh no like society goes on people keep like trying to live keep pushing it prolong prolonging it like get put in more destitute like situations and reading like a book like that is definitely all those themes like started to just kind of pour into the album. Interesting. Like this is a, so this is a a fiction book, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say I'd go as far as say fantasy. Nice. There's, but the, uh, it's like cooler than uh, Lord of the Rings. Nice. This should be a movie. This should 100 percent be a movie. But it's one of those things that came out in like the 80s. He had just passed away like recently. Rest in peace. But really, uh, yeah, yeah. Gene Wolfe did. Fuck, dude. Um, and he has he has like a ton tons of fantasy and fiction books. And yeah, man. Do authors Incredible. just like write books their whole life, dude? I know. It's crazy. It's wicked crazy. Like uh, I was just fucking look, looking up uh, R.L. Stein. He writes all like the goosebumps. He's yeah. still putting out goosebumps. Is he really? He's still fucking doing it. Crazy. Bands aren't like that as much. Bands no. will stop. Bands will have like a huge period where they stop. I don't know what it is with authors where they're just like they just. Keep I'm doing fucking. this into the grave until I'm like that's it, dude. 88. And no matter no matter how much success they get, they just keep writing until yeah. they fucking die. Yeah, because like it's goosebumps nuts. is like every. Dun, 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 dun. That's like what everyone knows Goosebumps for, like the show. So it's cool. Yeah, type in, uh, let's see. How many books has R.L. Stein written? I'm curious. S Stephen King, a great, a great author as well. He's at least 77. 77 books? Dude. Imagine writing 77 records. <laughs> Stop, dude. Oh, my God. How many riffs is that? How many shitty voice memos is that? I know, I, I know, right? <laughs> how many fucking... How oh. many of the same riffs are you going to write by accident and be like, oh, my God, I just copied my own riff? Well, it happens a lot. It does. It happens a lot when it's only, like, a handful of records, let alone uh, yeah. 77, dude. And, and you know how many shitty riffs you got to write to keep keep the one. Yes. What, like, 50? I don't even know, man. 20, I don't, 50, 100? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A hundred just, if you look on your voice, you, you forget how many voice memos you have and until you get to look at it, you're just like, you're just doing this. Yeah. You're just fucking scrolling, 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 scrolling. Yeah. It's like, oh, that, if you do one a day or two a day, the, yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. adds up, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. And 99% of them suck. Yeah, 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 but yeah, all, yeah. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is that one or two. That one, yeah. How many, I, I really want to confirm how many books he fucking has, dude. R.O. Stein has written over 200 books. Oh my god. 200, dude. That's insane. Yeah, he, fuck 77. That's oh, that's cool. That He's is, still going hard. That is fuck. Well, shout out to Arl uh, Arl Stein, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Those those were the books in uh I mean, elementary uh yeah. junior high. 
Yeah, definitely. Just, I mean, just, just the cover alone. You look at it, but oh, I, I got, I, I got to buy this. Yeah, Slappy the doll or the the mannequin. The mannequin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that guy freaked me out. I used to do. Uh, I, I guess you could. I don't know. You can't even call them book reports. Hey, remember, remember that you, do, you should do. You would do book reports. Oh yeah. I would. What I would do. I would read the back, read two pages in in, in the middle, and try to put some kind of page. Yeah, and that, and now it's funny because like you look you look back and like all the teachers knew. Oh yeah, you did not read it. Yeah, they all knew. I, I remember when you when you're a kid, you're just trying to like, you're not gonna fool the teacher, man. No, he or she knows. Yeah, that this this fucking kid did not read his book. They just phoned and, it in, <laughs> and they would and they would ask you questions, and you're like, sit there in silence. Yeah, like a yeah, fucking yeah, idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would try and read them. My mom was like strict. I'll, I'll give it up to my mom. I really would try and read them. But uh, yeah, I ended up in that position where I was yeah. like, yeah. How how old are you when you first read a book front to back? Um, I don't know, man. Like I can't I can't remember the first one. Lord of the Rings was the first ambitious book I ever read when I was in like fifth grade. Fuck. Yeah, the first one. It was incredibly hard in every word. I was like, what am I? I don't even know what I'm reading. And I was like, but this is too cool and the movie's coming out. I got to read the book. How many pages is that book? Because it, it's, it's a- I don't remember. It's a very large book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super hard. I remember it taking me like way too long and people being like, you're still reading that book? And it was. Yeah, type in a- Yeah, how, yeah, how many pages? What's well, two fucking pounds- <laughs> That's like, there's no way I read that much. Dude, a thousand, uh, 1,216 pages? I don't know. That's not, Dude. I remember, see, that's more, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was, three. I read The Hobbit. The Hobbit was the first book. The Hobbit. I read The Hobbit. And I okay. was like, that was awesome. I'll read Lord of the Rings. And the Lord of the Rings was way harder to read. That's Fuck. how it went down. Yeah, yeah. Three okay, so so the Hobbit is three hundred and twenty. Yeah, for sure. But 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 those are like so you have different size books. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like yeah, yeah. you have like these books gonna be like this these I guess you say depends. tall and wide books. Yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that it's it's like not okay. So this says okay. So paperback is four thirty two. That's a little bit more accurate. Which is to me that that that's a long book. When when I get yeah. a book in my hand and I see more than. 150 pages I'm, yeah. not, I'm not stoked okay but but you read them it depends if, if i'm really in the mode for it then i will dive in super hard the last book i've i remember reading was blood meridian by cormac mccarthy every okay. touring musician should read that book what what is it blood meridian blood meridian okay yeah i really mean that because it really is like it's about like uh you know People venturing out west into mm. the United States. It's extremely graphic, extremely graphic book. But it's it feels like tour where people fall off. They don't want to do it anymore. You got to totally. keep going. Totally. And like that's, it, it's hand in hand. If anyone out there ever wants to tour with a band, is touring with a band, like you'll relate to it for sure. I, I, mm. And it's it's a badass book. It's really good. Hey, Jake, um, go up, Jay. What's 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 that picture? Is that guy getting his head cut off? Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That really sums up like the book for sure. Oh shit! It's like scalping for scalping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuts. It, it's it, it's like warfare out there. Yeah. And you okay. see the guy below him. He's like he's got the axe to his head. You know what I mean? Dude. Okay. This is this looks and sounds intense. Yeah. When does book come out? Uh, nineteen eighty. I don't know exactly when. 1984? It sounds like you always... 1985. I was born that year. It sounds like you've always been a reader. Yeah, I think so. Hmm, explains, explains a lot. Yeah. Explains a lot with your, uh, with your thought process. I guess. I mean, my mom was really it just helps. the one to be like, keep reading, keep reading. And hmm. yeah. I, th I think that, that, might, that might have... Uh, He's, his, my favorite book by Cormac McCarthy, though, is The Road. The Road. That came out in 2006. That's like, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. It's a great father-son story. The Road sounds like a like a torn book. The yeah, road. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a good movie on it, too. Is yeah. it a movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. The Road? Yeah, that's a movie. Is it based off that book? It's based off the book. Read the book, though. Okay. That one, the top left. Super, that's it. That, 
That's it. That's all you need. Okay. That's my favorite book. Easily. You know what book I've always wanted to read? It's on my bucket list. Uh, Forrest Gump. Damn, I, I've never I've read... Want, I've always wanted to read it. Right? Because it's one of those things where it's like, basically before our time, but the movie's in our time. So it's like, yeah. we've seen the movie. One of my favorite movies. Probably top, right? top five for sure. That's sick. Top five for sure, dude. Yeah. Even you just saying that is like, oh my God, I bet the book is incredible. Mm-hmm. You and, you, and you have these, I'll say it, these assholes that read like a fuck. They'll like... Uh, shout out to Alex, our, our previous drummer. He'll like read like, not even read. He'll hear about it and try to like. T- people will talk about the book. I, I say, shut the fuck up. I, I want actually. Yeah. No, I, I want. I want. Yeah. I, I, I want to read. It. I want to read it. Yeah. They'll, yeah, they'll yeah, like yeah. try to like talk about it. Like, Did you fucking read it? No. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. That's why when we were looking up Blood Meridian, I'm like, yeah, that that picture sums it up. That's. A, I'm not gonna say anything about it. You can just see it. You know. What's your favorite movie? <sighs> I don't know. Um, that cover looks it, it, re- it really depends on like the genre and everything uh, man favorite movie I love uh, Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger is like probably sick. one of the coolest movies of all time that's sick Um, that was like yeah that shit is insane if you're into death metal like you kind of gotta love this movie hmm. um as far as like, yeah, I, I'm. This isn't my favorite movie though. It, it's hard with movies. I, I I don't know. I like Halloween. As far as like horror movies go, like the original mm-hmm. one, John Carpenter. I think that's like sick. That's a, that movie is this movie, the original one. And Rob Zombies is cool too, but is such the product of like, uh, not care, uh, like urgency, mm-hmm. like really making a movie quickly low budget even him making the score to this movie putting it like putting it into five four the theme song yeah that's crazy like it makes you it makes it like get stuck in your head it's noticeable yeah and um it's uh it's like uneasy you know because everyone listens to four four or three four so it's like it being in five four i feel like adds so much to it and like uh for a horror movie, for a horror movie, for that like uneasiness. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's hard to say if it's my favorite movie. There's like a subjective take and an objective take on it, but like I feel like as far as film goes, I yeah, I gotta give it up to this. Do you imagine to John Carpenter? Yeah, yeah. A lot of his movies. Imagine writing that. So hey, I have I have this idea for a, a fucking song. Yeah, five, yeah. Five, four. I'm always, I'm always fascinated, like how they write like movies, like a song. Sometimes, like man, he's like you, you wrote that. Holy fuck! If I'm right, he did that like super fast. Like he only had a couple days left to submit it, and he went, "Oh no, I didn't do the score," because he had like filmed the whole thing <laughs> and was just like took out the synth and keyboard and was like, "Fuck, fuck, fuck," and Damn. like just like hammered it out like that. That's what I mean by urgency. But sometimes uh, that that urgency will just help you. Right? It's so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is what do you think uh now with obviously with your with your uh perspective, what do you think riffs come from? Uh I don't know. Other riffs? Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I like I just think you keep like hearing riffs and then like kind of just gets funneled down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like uh even we were talking about this the other day. We got a song called Out of the Shadows that like I had heard while playing like Castlevania. I was like, oh, why isn't this a riff? And, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of took that, put some ideas into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And turned it into like a circle pit riff. Okay. I, maybe uh, I'll, I'll, maybe uh, there's a, a pre question to, to the question. Yeah. Okay. So obviously you're, at, you're in a hospital. Yeah, for sure. Alone. Yeah. Oh, well, what you're getting, uh, nurses are helping you sneak in. Yeah. The, and there were times, family. there were times they could come in too. It was okay. such like an ebb and flow thing where they're like, COVID's over. And then they were like, no one can come in. Like, there's an mm. outbreak. Fuck. Dude. Yeah. So it was like, that almost made it worse because it was like, mm. am I going to see people today or not? Like, what, what's going on? And what what was, I mean, this is an odd question, but what, what was the vibe like? Because I know yeah. in, in a, when you're talking cancer, are you around other patients that are, are, are dying? Or definitely okay. So especially at the time, like like like, like you were just saying, like there's uh, there's people allowed, not not allowed. So uh, and there's you and know is 
they don't, they're not allowed to have a priest in there, correct? No, they have, like, I was saying this in a different interview. They have, um, oh, my God, why can't I think of the name of it? They have a, uh, they have somebody come around that's, like, spiritual and is studied on, like, all different types of religions. So it wouldn't be a priest. So they can kind of speak to everybody about, like, their religion or, like, their belief system, you know? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because she was mad cool. Because when when you think about it, there's so many different types of religions. There's so many kinds. So you That's can, exactly what I mean. And it's like disease doesn't discriminate against anybody. So it's no. like not to mention religion. So it's like they have to have somebody like that there. That's like um, we're all dying. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. For <laughs> real. You know. Yeah. What did that like? Uh, did that change? Like, like what did you start to believe in when when you were in there? I mean, I was like, wasn't, I wasn't believing in anything really. I was praying. I, I had said it. I'll say what I stopped believing in everything. Not because I'm like, I don't believe in anything. Life's pointless out of a way of like, I can't just be sitting here praying to nothing right now or else I'm like gonna die. You know what I mean? Like no one, if there is a God, he's not coming to save me right now, but this medicine Whoa. is going to save me. And if I do all these things, so it's like, I had, I had to put like, even if I wanted to believe in it, I had to put religion to the side, you know, and just mm -hmm. like focus on what was there in the present, which was my health and mm -hmm. people who are like educated and smart in, uh, you know, in all different types of not just disease, but like infections, anything like that, that could have got me sick or like fucked up. Yeah, I was yeah. curious because obviously we're not we're not talking about like it's because religion and God are actually very separate. Yeah, you know, there's uh because funny someone will ask, I kind of know where the, where the conversation is going. They first ask the first question that they ask me, yeah. "Are you religious?" And I say no. Yeah, and yeah, then they're yeah. okay, okay. So well, you don't you don't, you don't believe in God, but yeah. I, I I never even answer that because okay, this this was your first question. Now I know where you're coming from. It's this is not even it's not worth to go back and forth. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you asked me if I was spiritual. Do you ask me, do I believe in God? Yeah. Because those, yeah. th those are very different questions. For sure. So I was, I was just, uh, obviously, I was very curious, like, you know, where, where, where your mind and- uh, I believe in everything. Okay. I do. I believe that, like, humans are just too stupid to even that's have, true. like, a, con a concept of anything like that. You we know are, what I mean? We are such stupid fucking yeah. beans, dude. After going through what I went through, it's like nothing will make you feel smaller than that and realize like, wow, there's so there's 8 billion of us here and I'm just one of them. So I like better listen to everybody and everyone, uh, you know, there's something valid to everyone's belief. Totally. And that's how I look at it now. Do you think there's like a, there's like a empowering and freedom to accept like, hey, I ain't shit. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel, I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of people won't agree because they want, like, they're trying to hold on to, like, this, I'm, I'm special, I'm fucking special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. To me, um, what helps me is, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I'm nothing with this one on, on this planet. And to me, for, for me, that gave me, like, 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 like a freedom. That's kind of the theme of the, the album is, like, we all exist together and we all, like, work together. Totally. You know what I mean? And it's, mm -hmm. like, we rely on each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Like in the face of peril, in the face of last day of sun, if you will. You know what I mean? It's like you got to mm -hmm. work together to like yeah, really get anywhere. And like, uh, yeah. So even, even after that, you still believe that riffs come from other riffs? I think riffs come from other riffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like, uh, I think it's important to know that and to like have like a reference, like whether it was like us being influenced by like a master riff like a Paul Speckman kind of style thing mm -hmm. or um, Entombed or Carnage or, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that on this new album. Um, God Macabre, Macabre End, like anything like that. I think having like a reference riff is good, but then eventually if you listen to like a shit ton of music like the two of us do, like you're just going to spit something out into your voice memos. Totally. And there's like, yeah. so there's like a conscious side and a subconscious side when it comes to riffs. Sure. But when it comes down to it, I think it all comes down to what we've listened to over the years. Whether it's totally. Children of Bodom when I'm like getting into this or like uh, the maimed, the the one and only maimed demo from uh, Illinois that I listened to. Yeah. You know? That's like so the, sick. The deepest, like deepest thing or something that is like, you know, really big and like everyone knows it, everyone sees it. Mm -hmm. Dude, you got me into some bands like uh, straight up. 
I mean, uh, I never heard master. Oh yeah. And dude. today was my first time sitting down. Yes, dude. Uh, I'm gonna play master because I heard you talking about it. I'm like, oh shit, they, they came out in 1990. It was like obviously a very legendary band. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I was like, oh, this is fucking crazy. I, I listened to Carnage for the first time. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're playing Carnage on the on, on, on the bows here. I was like, oh shit, this is, because obviously, yeah. uh, um, shout out to Michael Amat. You know, I was I'm, just about to say. It's like, he is, I would that's love, a riff fucking goat, dude. I know. I would love to, I feel like if I brought, I would love to meet that dude. Because it's like, Carnage to Carcass to Arch Enemy is like the craziest trajectory. Because Carnage, Dark Recollections alone is like the grimiest death metal. Mm -hmm. And then like Arch Enemy is so refined now. Yeah. And like the solos, the riffing, the vocals, totally. it's just like, dude, the evolution is crazy. It's it's nuts. What do you yeah. think are like the, because uh, especially when you're talking like death metal, there's like a, you have so many modern bands. You yeah. Know, a lot of, a lot suck. A lot are bringing something new to the table. You know, what, yeah. are, what are like some like modern death metal bands or Frank or bands that, that, that you're jamming? Um, there's so many, uh, I'd say like right now I've been listening. I'm, I'm not going to lie right now on this tour. I've been listening to a lot of old school stuff. Uh, incantation, mortal throne of Nazarene. Mm. That album is so fucking good. It's heavier than Autopsy. That's mm. the one I've been listening to. Um, everyone should go listen to that because sometimes I sit there and listen. And I'm like, how how is something this heavy? And uh, that's the one. I don't think I even jammed this record. This record is like crazy. And uh, the first one, uh, the first album was great too. This album is like where they really stand out and shine and like really come into like who they are mm -hmm. um yeah i recommend this record that's what i've been listening to off the top of my head you know there's so many bands out there bands uh we've toured with and played with whether it's like vomit forth or frozen soul um you know there's so many death metal bands around right now like it, everyone is kind of breaking off into their own territory i've been talking about this and I didn't like know how to feel about it, but now I'm so confident about it because every band should sound like unique in this genre. That's how it was back well, in like the well, 90s. Yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As opposed to like just ripping off, ripping off, ripping off, yeah. you know? And uh, I think it's really cool. I think there's like, as far as like the modern death metal bands go, uh, it's like a good time to be into death metal. Yeah, and it's like it's like there's like this crossover going. Like you get hardcore combined with the grindcore combined with yeah. death metal. You have like bands like two hundred stab wounds that are killing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. For the soul adding some something fresh. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. That's actually why I went to to, to, to that show and saw you guys. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Before I want to see okay, because because you keep hearing about a band. Yeah. So, so you you got to see them. You got to listen to them. Yes. You know, there was actually why I was there. I, I forgot, dude. There's so many shows, dude. That they're, they're all it's kind of like. It's nuts. Another, Becoming one big show in like my like memory. Another <laughs> great band right now is Cruel, Cruelty from Japan. If you listen Cruelty. to them. No. Oh, you got to check them out. It's yeah, awesome. With a K. Out. You know I love that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we just, uh, we didn't get to play with them, but we like toured on like, uh, like we played Vancouver the night before they played Vancouver. Mm. And then like we crashed at their Airbnb and we like, we hung out with them and stuff and uh yeah, that's a killer band. There, there's so many right now. If you just go down the rabbit hole, you'll find you'll find them all. Dude, totally. And the, the one of the best ways to find new bands or music is when you let a record just play. Yes. Uh, especially when I'm about, I'm about to do a podcast, I'll listen to like the record and then jam or something. Just let it go. And yeah. Jammed your new, new record, and then re the the record's over, and then it's another band comes on. Yeah. I, I was like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, Year of the Knife. Oh my God! So that band that was sick. It was. I was like, "What is this? Holy that, shit!" That was your first time hearing them. Yeah, first time ever. Okay, so they've like, they've been through like um, a ton of different like iterations of the sound, and like they used to be more like hardcore leaning, but they would have mm. these parts that were like bolt thrower with like hard double kick, and this new album is so so heavy. It's just like so leaning into death metal yeah that like uh yeah it's amazing i did some guest i didn't do guest vocals but i did some gang vocals on that one really yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. with a bunch of other friends it was awesome oh i uh i think i saw your name in the credits 
Really? I think, yeah. No shit. Because you, it, well, Shout out, you're the knife. You guys are killer. No, because if you jam the you guys first, and girl are killer. When you jam those first two songs, there's, there's more names in the, in, in, in the title. No, I'm not in one of those. That's like, um, I forget who I'm wrong. is on those. No, it's all good. <laughs> I'm positive I'm not because it was like such a last minute thing where we just did gang vocals in, uh, at God City with like Kurt Ballou. Mm -hmm. It was just like a total hangout. It was awesome. Dude, sick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad they had me there. And like, uh, even if it was just for like a small little thing and just hearing the record in the studio, I was like, there's no way they sound like this now. Because they kind of had an HM2 thing going before, kind of mm. like us. Yeah. And then this one is just straight bulldozer, sick, dump truck riffs. Dump truck riffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just imagine like, beep. Oh, that's beep, a good way to put it. Dumping it. So, yeah, oh yeah. I've been listening to that record. That's a, that's a band I've been listening to. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. And uh, so you're going to the UK for the first time, right? Yep. Uh, next year. Yep. Years and, in the making. And it was... Today, I also jammed, uh, I could barely see this name, Celestial Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all awesome. There, I was like, this is fucking, this is, it sounds very modern death metal, but I, yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. No, that's it was, fine. It was just like, oh, this sounded like, like the, I guess the, uh, the production value was like, okay, this is heavy. Yes. But it was very like, this is death metal. It's yes. cool. It's yeah, cool. It was yeah, dope. Yeah. yeah, man. They're great. I'm like really excited to go over there and headline. We've wanted to go to the UK for a while. And uh, my like parent, my mom and uh, my aunt are from like Glasgow in Scotland. So, really? Yeah. So I got a ton of family oh, over there. So it's like, I can't wait to go to the UK. I'm going to hopefully see some family. I don't know if I will. Um, and then uh, I'm definitely going to rip some shows. We're, we're definitely going to do it. So it's going to be awesome. Is this the, uh, this is the flyer? Yeah, that's well, the flyer. Yeah, man. dude. January. It's coming up, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's next down the pipeline. I can't wait. Dude, go to London. You're going to London, dude. I know. What was it like Fuck the first time sick. you went to London? Uh, I'm going to piss off some people right now. Uh, the food okay. sucks. What? Dude, British food's fucking terrible. Oh, man. It's terrible. Oh, but uh, uh, there's there's some things, there's some good things to it. Like, there are chips. Yeah. Or, I'm excited for tea time. Tea time? Well, yeah. Tea is good. Yeah, dude. But now it's different. It's, like, it's more like Americanized. So you have like... Chipotle there now, and yeah, it's kind of like yeah. it's, it's kind of English breakfast. I'm trying to get into it, dude. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they, they have the uh, baked beans kind of style, like the the uh, tomato, the ham. Yeah, yeah. I can't. But you'll you're probably gonna try all this and probably love it. Don't mm -hmm. don't fucking listen to me, dude. You're fucking gonna go there have a, have a great time. Yeah, all right, cool, cool. And eat, and eat a lot of shitty chips, dude. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sick. I'm down. A, a lot of fried stuff. Oh, I'm so down. Yeah. Just fucking walk, just, just walk around, dude. Yeah, I will. I will. It's I'm excited to just like, I, I went to Scotland. I went to Glasgow. I went to Edinburgh when I was like 18. I just like listened to music the whole time while, while walking around. So it's like, I am excited to go back and like, well, just see everything, you know, whether it's just sightseeing. I'm honestly just excited for the shows. I think the shows are going to be fucking awesome. You got, you got to have this fucking fish pie thing for sure, dude. Nah, <laughs> he looks nah, dude. Eight, eight, wait, eighteen British foods you should try other than fish and chips. Oh, there was this one thing I wouldn't have it. Blood pudding. That just sounds like you're eating out a girl that's on her period. Yeah, it, it's like it was like a can of just like dark. I I don't know what it was. I don't. I have no idea what it was. I forget what it was. Blood. That's exactly what I mean. It just looks. Yeah, like what? What do you even call that? Is that a sausage. No, it is not. I forget what's in it. But guess what? I'm going to eat it. You're gonna I'm going eat that. back with, yeah, I'm coming back with a vengeance. I'm having blood pudding. That's going straight to your muscles, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's what I need. <laughs> that's going to make my ribs harder. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah, dude. dude. That thing looks pretty gross. That's fucking gross. But, I, if but I, I'm going to eat it. Because the last time I was too scared. I was like, I was a little boy. I was like, oh, no way. I don't know. But now now, now you're older. Yeah. Like a, more, more of a, a life perspective I, I think back on it i was like i should try new things why did i not just try it but i'm not gonna eat that fish head pie no way no no nah. but but what are the gods told you that, that, that like the rip gods came down if you eat this shitty fish pie your wrist be heavier i'm gonna be like i guess i'm gonna have some light riffs <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. yeah it did it did look fucking terrible <laughs> well uh mark i i, I really appreciate you 
ma- making this drive down. I know you got to show it now. You're, Dude, you're, yeah. You're, you're going to San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, holy shit, man. We haven't played there since 2019, man. I can't wait. I love San Diego. Damn, dude. Any uh, closing thoughts, man? Um, yeah. Um, f- fuck anyone that tells you you can't do anything. Um, try really hard. Don't give up. Don't quit. Go wicked try hard until you get exhausted, and then you don't give a fuck. And then all the things you're, like, working for will happen. That's what's up. Yeah. Everyone, last day of sun, out now, came out two weeks ago. Fuck you, and that's it. All right, we're, we're fuck we're, you and thank you. Where can people if find you? you? Fu- if you fuck with us, thank you. If you don't fuck with us, thank you. Uh, so where can people find you? Uh, fumingmouth.com and then uh, fuming mouth on IG, fuming mouth on Twitter, fuming mouth on uh, on on Google, Google dot cool. fuming mouth. So you don't have a personal I- IG, correct? Hell no. It's smart. You don't really? Need it. You don't need it. I like the idea of like uh, my one friend did it with his band, and then. I like the idea of like not mystique, but just having it like go to the band. Don't worry about me. I got I got me. I got my fiance. I'm good. That that that's a cool way to approach it. I, I never really heard that before. Where it's like, yeah, I'm on there, but I'm not on my personal one. I have like no. I have like uh, you, you can see Are me you on still the hit band me IG. up in text. Like I hit you up before this. I was like, yo, it's good. I have to ask you something. Like yeah, it's not yeah. like I'm some recluse or something like sure. that, but sure. Yeah. Yes. Who who knew? Right. You, you send a, you can send a text and a call. Right. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh yeah. wow. Weird. Yeah. Well, uh, Mark, I appreciate the fuck out of you. Uh, again, thank you for making the drive. Yeah. And uh, have a good show tonight. Garza, thank you, bro. Fuck yeah, man. All right, everyone. That's it. Later. <laughs>